Hello everyone and welcome back again to another tutorial on our RTS series. So today we're going to be building a simple drag box selection system so we can use inside of our RTS projects. So let's go ahead and let's do this. So let me just quickly exit our reference project and let me open here the last project that we were on which is this one part two. All right so let's go ahead let it load it up so yeah so i'm going to just do a simple bug fix since our last tutorial so on our rts player we had this code here and the guy mentioned that the code that doesn't trigger the action press for the mouse wheel is because it doesn't have action press because it's a mouse wheel movement so it only has released and stuff so what I'm going to do is to remove this unhandled input because we are going to trigger the camera zoom for the mouse using that code down there on the bottom. So the thing I'm going to do here is simply to do an OR check and we're going to see if the action is has been released. So we're going to check is action just released instead of that and this should fix our bugs because we had a bug where the mouse was not triggered this part of the action because it doesn't have is action pressed. It only has release just pressed. So by using this, this is going to be triggered by the keypad whenever we pressed, and this is going to be triggered by the mouse wheel movement. If you remember, this function is being called here on our camera inputs, which is being called for every process. So if I run my project, we should be able to zoom with the mouse, and I forgot to add the action here which it needs to be zoomed out. So if we zoom in or out with the mouse, it works. And with the keypad, it also works. So that's for the bug fix of the input. So thank you guys for have mentioned it. So yeah, let me go ahead now and continue our project here. So back on our RTS here. So inside of our RTS player, we're going to be adding our selection manager, which is going to handle our drag box selection and selecting all the units inside of our project. So let's add a simple node here and call this one selection manager. Now let's save this one as a new scene. And I'm going to go ahead on our RTS systems and create a new folder inside of here. And this one's get to be called selection manager. So let's place this one as main. Same folder structure we've been using throughout this project so far. And we also need to add a script. So let me enter the scene, add the script inside of this scene. And this inside of the selection manager as main, extending our template script. Now we have our script here. Let me just save and see if it loads the script. Yes, it did. Now back on our selection manager here, we are going to be adding our UI for the drag box, which is going to be a simple nine patch rectangle. So you can do this with color rectangles. You could do this with sprites. I'm going to use control nodes for this because this is a UI element. And I would like to use the nine patch rectangle so I can do three by three grid, nine slice panels. I'll show you what that looks like. So for us to do that, now the last remaining thing is for me to add that image of the selection manager. So let me go ahead and do just that. So I'll be posting this image you can add to your own project. It's just a simple tell me why elements I'm building in Inkscape. And as you can see, that is what it looks like. And we are going to go to our selection manager, click here on edit region. And of course, let's add the texture because I forgot. And this is what it looks like. Let's add it this region. And I'm going to use this top one. Let's do a pixel snap and let's just do a simple square. And based on the draw here, let me just add the functionality of the night patch. So I think something like, so what's going here on the texture? Oh, it's the size. Yeah, I have dragged the wrong size. Oops, control Z. There we go. And yes, it's stretch. Now I believe that's it. So whenever we make a big bounding box and yeah, 
think you're gonna use the middle one so you can experiment with this you're going to see the effect it gives here in real time and just experiment with the graphics and see what kind of drag box system you want to do okay this was what i did and here on i think it's on the filter and so on texture you're going to see that we have the filter of the texture working but you can do pixel perfect for this so you can do a filter here and switch it to nearest so now we have a pixel perfect selection drag box system so now we have built our selection manager i can simply now drag and drop the selection manager inside of our player and as you can see on our main scene that is what it looks like okay now if we run our project we should be able to see it however there's no code for it so it's going to stick on the top there so let's see what the code for this is going to look like so let's start by building the selection manager functions so the code for the selection manager so far is going to be pretty simple we will be adding the all the selection mechanisms inside of this one but for now let's go ahead on our public methods and add a couple a new function here so we are going to be updating our selection rectangle based on a new rectangle which is going to be our rec2 variable and this is the part of the code where we're going to do an absolute check on our rectangle. So this is going to prevent us from creating negative rectangles too. So whenever you do an absolute check, it's going to turn all that negative scale from the rect2 to positive one. And it's going to allow us to apply that inside of our, our nine patch rectangle because 9 pen rectangle does not handle negative scaling as you can see here if i try to scale it backwards it's not going to work so the way we do that is we apply the absolute function so it normalizes the rectangle so any negative scale we have with the player being able to start selecting here and going backwards is going to allow us to keep the selection still as positive so this is what the function is going to do next we're going to update our ui position and size to that new rectangle we just created and if that new rectangle we created if its area is going to be higher than our minimum size we're going to display it so now let's build the variables we have seen here the first one is going to be our ui drag box so i'm going to just drag and drop our ui net patch and let's put that inside of our on ready variables <clears throat> so this is going to be our ui drag box and the next we only need our drag box minimum size constant so let's create this new constant which is going to be a integer and let me just see here so i have assigned it to be a four so now this code should work so now we need to process this so the selection manager is not going to generate the new rectangle because the new rectangle selection is going to be based on the mouse inputs and following the previous tutorial we have split all the inputs from the player to be placed inside of our object which is now called rts player so all the work we did with the rts camera of splitting the inputs outside of it now we're going to be adding a new input here on our player which is going to be handling the track box selection methods so this is part of building an ecosystem for the players so we have all the input commands grouped inside a single place so let's first add here our node so let me grab my selection manager and hold control we're going to add the reference here and i'm going to be assigning the type from the given node so we have auto completion a little bit as I've explained in a previous tutorial and now let's work on the code that's going to do this so inside of our public vars let's add a couple variables so these ones are the mouse drag box start position the end position and a boolean to control if we are going to show or not the drag box so we're going to be assigned this to be zero at first and these are vector tools so now let's go ahead and build the function that's going to process our drag box selection methods. So I'm going to go ahead here on our public methods and start adding our function. So this is going to be a, a selection drag box. And the first bits of code that are going to add here is going to be this one. 
So the first bit of code here is if we start pressing the left mouse click event, which we have built, we're going to first check if our mouse start drag position is equal to zero, because we need to know this function is going to be called every time for every process frame. So the way that we are going to control if we start pressing or not is by doing the following. So whenever you start pressing, so let me go here. Whenever you start pressing, we're going to set the position of the, of the drag box to be inside of this little corner here. And whenever you start dragging, we're going to update the next position of the mouse to be the size of the rectangle, thus creating our selection drag box. So this is the steps we're going to be doing. First, to check if we start pressing the mouse. If the start position is zero, we're going to assign the current mouse position from the viewport. Now, the end position at first is going to be our start position, but now we're going to update it frame by frame. So outside of this check here, we're going to add a couple of new codes. So this is the code that's going to update the mouse position to be inside of that. So one of the things here, let me check, is what are these errors? So I seem to have not copied. Let me just reduce this side of this line. So here is how the code works. So first we assign the start position and if that's the case we update our end position and now we're going to be continually, if we are continually pressing the mouse left click, we're going to be continually updating our end position of the drag box. Next our selection manager is going to be called with the function we built to update its selection rectangle and we're going to pass it a new rectangle tool. So the code for this to create our new is the start position, which is going to represent its position on the rectangle tool. Then next we're going to update its size. So here you can see we have two ways of creating rect tool. We're going to use the first one, which is given a position and a size. So the size for the selection drag box is this one. So it's the end position minus the start position. So if I go back here to my, you can see that we're going to pass that new rectangle we just built with the mouse and that is going to be converted in case we have negative coordinates. So our UI drag box can have its position and size assigned to that new rectangle. And we are going only to display that rectangle if our new rectangle has an area higher than our drag box mean size. Otherwise, whenever you start clicking on the same place, it's going to try and display our UI elements. So that's why I have a constant to hide it if we do not fulfill the minimum get area of our rectangle. So if I run this code, let's see what we have done so far. So as you can see, What's going here is we are not resetting the start position. We only updated the end position because our start position was already set. So whenever we release the mouse, we need to reset all those coordinates. So after we have done that check, we are going to now handle our deselect movement. So after we have checked if our, so this is actually here. So for every frame, we're going to check if we press the left mouse click and it's going to run this code. And whenever we release the left mouse click, we're going to reset our start position to zero and our end position to zero and ask for our selection manager to hide the drag box, which is this little bit of code here. And we are actually missing that function. So let me just quickly update here. So these, this is the function. So yeah. We're going to simply show the drag box or hide it based on, on these commands. And this is just, we have a little more control here inside of selection manager because this selection manager has access to the UI drag box, but the player doesn't, uh, doesn't need to know necessarily what the UI drag box is. It just needs to say to the selection manager to hide the drag box. So we don't keep popping in here additional nodes that we don't need to take care personally. So our RTS player can just say for the selection manager to hide its drag box. Otherwise we're going to keep piling here a lot of nodes that doesn't necessarily need to be added. So if we run this code, now we should be able to see it. So if you did not have this drag box here, so this bit of code here, which displays it, and let's just say that I want to always display if I update with the new selection rectangle. So when I start clicking, you're going to see the rectangle is going to pop up here. 
and this is not something we want because whenever you select a single unit we do not want for the UI to keep popping up unless absolutely necessary so that is why we do this check here we are calculating areas so we are not calculating pixel size so this is something worth documenting in our one so these are area values so these are not pixels so with this little bit here of documentation, I should remember in the future that this is not pixel size, but actually rectangle area values being calculated. So there we go. On the next part, we're going to see how to be adding our first units and see how we are going to be selecting them. So that's all for this part. I'll see you on the next one.